Well, all right. So you just finished playing some blues. You've been playing all kinds of tunes, learned all the kinds of great stuff on the saxophone. You're on your way to becoming a great saxophonist. I'm going to give you something new now that will bump you up a level into the professional realm of saxophone playing. It's something that really creates a beautiful quality in your playing. And I've been using it on some of the excerpts in the past, on the past lessons. And I'm going to demonstrate for you right now. It's called vibrato. <laughs> So now what vibrato is, it's the act of creating waves in your sound, generating some kind of motion with your sound, like as if there is a wave in it. And it really is great for the color of the sound. It just livens the sound up. So many instruments use it, vocalists as well. You'll hear it lots of times on all types of instruments as well as vocalists. And it just brings the sound to life. So what I'm going to do right now is sort of teach you how to use the vibrato, how to, how to create your own vibrato. It's all about methodical practice just like everything else. So let's get started to it. First, I'll describe to you a little bit how to create the vibrato. We use our jaw. We actually use the hinge in our jaw and we let it swivel down just a little bit. So Say the word ya 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 ya. When you say that, that's the motion that your jaw makes when you create vibrato. Ya 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 ya. Now, when we're actually playing the saxophone, we can't drop our jaw too much because we still need to have an embouchure. So we'll drop it just a little bit, but we'll still think ya 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 as we do it. Now I'm going to play one note and demonstrate this. I'll play a C. So you heard that, right? Ya, 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 in the sound. That's what I'm doing. I'm creating vibrato. Now let's start putting together a way to practice vibrato. I like to practice vibrato by starting out with a slow vibrato, basically one wave per beat. So I'll count you off and I'll demonstrate for you what I mean by one wave per beat. It's going to go ya, 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 ya. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So that's one wave per beat. That's quarter note vibratos. The next will go to eighth note vibratos. Get a little bit faster with the vibrato, getting it closer to speed how we'd use it in music. Here it goes. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So that's eighth note vibrato. And we're getting closer to how it should be when we are actually playing pieces. The next one is triplet vibrato. Now we haven't talked so much about triplets yet, but what a triplet is are three notes per one beat. So we're going to create three waves per beat. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm going to do that with my vibrato. One, two, ready, play.
Getting close to sounding like a real musical vibrato. One more step, we're going to go to fours. Four waves per beat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here we go. One, two, ready, play. <laughs> Now once we get to that speed, that's getting really right there where we want it when we're playing our vibrato throughout the music. Now, a couple things to think about. When I play low notes, I often play with a wider vibrato and a slower speed. Now wider means bigger and deeper waves, which means you're letting more slack on your jaw as you say ya ya ya. And narrow vibrato, you wouldn't move it as much. It'd be ya 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 ya. Just a little bit of movement for a narrow vibrato. But for a low note, We'll do a wider and slower vibrato. Listen to this. I'll play a low D with vibrato. Can get a little bit of an airy sound on the tenor saxophone in the low range, and it sounds good with a little vibrato slowly. Now I'm going to play a high D, way up high. We haven't learned this note yet, but I'll play it for you so you can hear a fast, narrower, vib narrower vibrato. So when you're in the high range, it sounds better to play a faster, narrower vibrato, and in the low range, a slower, wider vibrato. Something to think about when you're playing music because vibrato isn't always the same speed, but you can find a common denominator for most of the vibrato throughout the range of the horn so you can get it up to a, an average speed. So I would definitely recommend that you start practicing vibrato. You can do the exercise I just showed you, playing it quarter note, eighth note, triplet, and then sixteenth note, that's four notes per beat four waves per beat, and you can do that up and down the scale. Try one note at a time of each scale. That will help you, an exercise that I give lots of my private students to work on. Uh, I would like to leave you with the idea about vibrato that it's important to use vibrato when you're playing a solo, when you have long notes, when you want to bring out some expression, but when you're playing in a band, you have to be very careful about using vibrato because sometimes it doesn't sound good if other people aren't using it. If you're the only one using it, or if people are doing it at different speeds, different times than you, it might not sound so good. So save your vibrato for when you have a nice solo, when you're playing on your own, or if you're playing in a section with people using the vibrato, you can try to match their vibrato. So work on your vibrato, and I'll see you on the next lesson.